symbol of excellence in sports entertainment. Hello and welcome to Arn. This is Paul Bromwell, and today I'm joined by the Hall of Famer, the founder of the Four Horsemen, the creator of the Spine Buster, the 1A of tag team wrestling, and he's my tag team partner. He's double A. He's Arn Anderson. Arn, how are you this week? Well, it's a new year, isn't it? It is, man. It is a new year. We are officially in 2024. Uh, hey, your Georgia Bulldogs put a beating on Florida State. Did you have fun watching that game? Uh, yeah, what was proved is that there is a major, major flaw in the, in the system of college football with who ends up in the last four. And I think, you know, I think Georgia wouldn't, they wouldn't have ran that score up like that unless they were trying to prove a point. I mean, a team that hasn't lost in over two years and they get beat by one of the greatest dynasties in the history of college football, Alabama, but that puts them out. That kicks them out of that top four. Yeah. You know, and you look at that, they 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 could have scored 100 points if they'd have wanted it, to. Yeah. Now, to be fair to Florida State, I know they had a lot of guys not playing, but still, uh, Georgia said, listen, we should have been one of the top four. They made a statement, that's for sure. And uh, we'll see who ends up uh, winning the whole thing. Some some fun games as you and I record this uh, yesterday. We're recording Tuesday before this drops. But, man, listen, I'm so glad to see you. And today I want to get into it because we're calling an audible. We're taking a break from Ask Arns. We, we may get some time for Ask Arn at the end, depending on how this goes today. But we have a very special guest joining us for the fourth time in the history of the show. We don't normally have guests. We've had Medusa. We've had Brock. You're, Tully's been on before, but today uh, I'm really excited because we got a genuine shooter, a throwback to the days, a territory wrestling, a booker, a champion everywhere he went, a Hall of Famer, a man who's going to make you tap like you mean it, buddy. That's right. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Arn Show, Mr. Gerald Briscoe. Gerald, how are you, man? <laughs> Man, I, you know, I'm great, but man, I, 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 how do I live up that energy? I, I always get scared when somebody says a real shooter. I mean, you know, <laughs> what, is, what the hell is a real shooter? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to one, one of the greatest of all time sitting there opposite of you. That's, I'm so happy to, to be on this show. Happy New Year. Sitting in back in that green room, listening to that football talk, I wanted to jump in so bad because I'm a Florida State fan. Oh, and, no. oh. But, I, <laughs> but I'm also a cowboy. Oh. I'm also a cowboy, you know. We took we took care of Texas A and M out there. Sure, so, yeah, you know, there you go. We're, we're, I'm happy. I'm a happy camp. All right, how you doing? Happy New Year, my brother Paul. Same to you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Good to be on this show, man. I, I listen to it religiously, and I. I enjoy the hell out of it. There's straight shooters, and then there's Arn Anderson, man, a good guy. Wow. So thanks, thanks a lot for having me on. We are honored to have you here, sir. And uh, boy, did I step in shit with the Florida State stuff, right? Well, you, you, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know I, I got, I got podcast too with old John Layfield. We have a lot of fun telling stories. We're football fans, as you know, Arn. And I was, sure, I, I, I was uh, telling Layfield, that's a different. Norvell been there, what, Florida State? three, four years, four years, say four years. He just turned a corner on a recruiting. Uh, Kirby snark has been there a little bit longer. He got that head start on the recruiting. And, and that's what, that's what stood out to me. The talent and depth that Georgia has. And, and Arn, you're so, you're so right to be knocked out by in one game by a dynasty such as Alabama. The system is flawed, but fortunately we're going that 12 game, uh, 12 team uh, bracket next year. So, all will be right at that, but there'll still be problems there. <laughs> you can't have enough college football for me, and I know you feel the same way. We we love it, right? Yeah, and that's what I miss about being around you weekly. You know, was our, our our sports conversation. You know, it wasn't all about wrestling. We you know we had to sit there and and take a lot of lot of lot of grief from a lot of different people about a lot of mistakes that other people made. <laughs> and, but but also Arn and I could take some time out and just talk football, just be friends, and just just sit back and relax a little bit, and not have any pressure on what you're saying or anything. Just talk college football, and pro football too. We, we both love the sport of football. 
Well, let me just say this one more time. We are honored to have you on here. You just don't know, Gerald, you're legendary. And I saw you go from a legendary wrestler to a legendary leader at Gorilla. You made that thing fly, my friend. You were the cog that that uh, the straw that stirred the drink, I'm telling you. Well, thank you. As you know, and uh, we've all experienced that in those chairs there, you know, with the, with the boss man across the moniker from us, you know. But having somebody that you can rely on, you know, when, when, the, when the heat started flying in there, no matter how perfect you are, are as you remember, heat, would, he, heat could start flowing in in a flash, something you wouldn't even notice, but the boss noticed. And, and uh, to have somebody sitting there that, that, that kind of elbow you and take that heat off of you, you know, I can always depend on guys like you and Finley and, and uh, Malenko and some of those other guys that sit there next to me over when uh, Briscoe, well, why, why'd they go long? Well, I don't know the agents here, but, uh, you know, you know, you guys would jump right in and said, Vince, uh, we did, they didn't tell us about that. What can we do? You know? So I always appreciated the backup I got from guys like you. Well, we were a unit, my friend. That thing was a well-old machine. And uh, there was a reason because there were qualified guys sitting in those chairs. Over, overqualified. Overqualified. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, you know, the, the, we, but we had fun, too. I mean, we did always get our ass. We had fun. We had some laughs sitting there. You know, we, we could uh, watch a little something would happen. And, you know, we could all look at each other and just kind of giggle a little bit like, like my school boys and, and enjoy ourselves, you know. So I, 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 my memories are, are fond of it. You know, the people that I was able to work with is it, second to none. The skilled people, you know, not only the agents and, and the producers that, that we had to do it, but the, 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 the mic people, the, the sound check people, the monitors, all those professionals that WWE had. And I'm sure AEW had a bunch of them too, but I, I'm just sitting there speaking from WWE standpoint. We had the best in the world sitting there. We always knew if there was a problem, it would get fixed instantly, man, no matter what it was. Even when the microphone, even when the headset wouldn't fit your head, Art, and I see you're stretched <laughs> that one out where it's almost more fitting on you now. <laughs> and look at Paul Shuckland. He's been dying to say that himself, but he had had the ball. No. <laughs> That's because I know he can still spine buster my ass the next time I see him. Well, he can now, spine I'm... buster my ass too, man. <laughs> Shit. I, I go for a spine buster and somehow it gets countered and me staring at my asshole. Are you kidding me? How did I, Gerald, how did I get here? And uh, more so, how did I, how do I get out? Well, you, 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 you didn't tap soon enough. That's how you got there. <laughs> I love it. Hey, hey, listen, this is, and I said, this is such a treat for me because I'm talking to two, uh, when you think of tag team wrestling and I, I'm talking about Jack and Jerry Briscoe and then Ole and Arn, Tully and Arn, and, and it just goes on and on. Talk to a little bit, Jerry, about when you first heard of Arn Anderson or first for saw or recognized Arn Anderson. Was it back in Georgia, or when did you first see the youngster Arn Anderson? Well, it was actually back in Georgia, and uh, you know, uh, uh, I I was turn I was watching TV one day, and I turned it on. I thought that damn Oli had, had had you know impregnated somebody that I didn't know about because when I saw Arn for the first time, man. I, and I'm sorry, Art, I got to say it. You look just like your daddy, oh. Oli, man. Your <laughs> just daddy? Like, hey, your daddy, Oli. Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just no. like him, man. I said, where the hell did that, did that recreate? You know, he brought Buzz Sawyer. Buzz was ugly. You're a handsome guy. I'm not saying Oli's handsome by far. But, Oli man, had to have a pretty girlfriend for yeah, Arn. That's what yeah, exactly. You know, that's the reason. That's the reason I had my brother. You know, he had to have a pretty guy standing next to him. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was seeing seeing the, the mechanics that that Arn had, and uh, I, I, we, you know, as well as we've known each other, you know, we never got to, well, who broke you and all that stuff. You know, because we're friends, we had so much business to take care of, but. Who was it? Gene that broke you in, or I—I I don't really know the story there. You—you you will know this guy, Gerald, that most people won't know, but you'll know immediately. There was a guy that lived outside of Atlanta who trained guys and was a hell of a worker. Ted Allen. Oh, Ted, yeah. You remember yeah. Ted? Oh, of course, a, a great enhancement guy, man, and one of the best. Him, Mike Jackson, some of those guys like that, man, they're awesome guys. 
Yeah. And, you know, invaluable. And he, you know, he didn't take advantage of me. He didn't stretch me. He didn't beat me up. He slammed the piss out of me. My very, <laughs> my, my very first training. And what kind of ring was that? What kind of ring did he have? The you, know, it, <laughs> you know, it was a pretty good, you know, everything was pretty, the equipment was good. And, and, uh, the way I met him was really, uh, just by chance. I was over, I was over running. I got through working out with the weights and I went over to the high school stadium where we played high school football there in Rome. It was on a Thursday and I was over there running and I started to leave and this car pulls in the building that they ran Georgia championship wrestling was hooked right onto the stadium where we played football. So I was going to get in my car and this guy pulls in and he gets out of his car. And immediately I recognized him and I went, that's Ted Allen. What, Ted what Allen. And I looked up and I said, Oh, there's the scoreboard. <laughs> okay. There's the sign. Oh, Georgia championship wrestling tonight. I went, wow, what timing. And I went through the whole thing. Excuse me, sir. I recognize you. Da, 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 da. How would a guy like me do what you do? I've loved it since I was eight years old. Now you could have gotten a, you can't do what I do, kid. What, what you mean? You out of your mind? You could have got both extremes. But the guy said, "Well, you seem like you know, da 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 da. You got the right attitude. You know, if you got five hundred bucks, I'll give you a tryout. I have a ring." So I went down to Cartersville and uh, gave it a try. You know, and just from watching it all those times you know how it is gerald i i, I could do a hip toss and an yeah. arm drag just from watching yeah. that doesn't make make light of you know how doing a good arm drag it really is but but you know it was like i was way ahead of the curve and I never had a training session but i had the right attitude i loved it i would have done anything to be a wrestler from the year eight years old on up and wow. that's that's you know, and he agreed to work out with me and got me booked on Atlanta TV. And my second TV taping, I got to work with Bob and Brad Armstrong. Wow, Armstrong! Wow, don't get any better than that, does it? No, I mean, I don't. Right off the bat, man, you're thrown in with the best. And I, I want to jump in there, jump there. I'll go back just a step for the chief of police in Rome, Georgia. I was really good buddies. I, I was a quail hunter. He, he was a big-time hunter. I had Britney Spain of bird dogs, and he had Britney Spain. Well, of course, he was friends with President Carter, so I used to call him John. John, I can't remember his last name. John. Uh, Collins? Uh, Collins. John, John Collins. John, John, John Collins. John, uh, uh, let's go down. Let's go bird hunting. I got my dogs ready, so we had to meet me in Atlanta, pick me up, and we go down to play down there, not on President Carter's land. He used to tell me we would be walking on field. He said, you know, there's a kid here. He's always in trouble, always in trouble. And he said, I know him like my own kid because he's so damn great. And he's in trouble so much. And he, he loves professional wrestling. He wants to be a professional wrestler. And he, he, he got the tools to do it there. So I first heard of you through John, John years and year, a couple of years before you ever got in the business. So when I finally saw you there, you know, I said, well, I didn't know who you were or anything. Started asking questions because you know, Arn, you're like me. You see somebody, you, you, it kind of sparks your interest. You want to know a little bit about it because you'll probably meet them somewhere down the line. So I found out you were that guy that John Collins had been talking about all the time there. I said, wow, man. But man, you know, you, you fit right in with that organization. You had that style, you had that Southern style because you'd watched it all your, your life. I mean, that's the only style that you really knew is to be aggressive there. And you carried that on, and you kept refining it, kept refining it until you become the star that you are. Man, congratulations! Well, thank you. I tell you, you know, I'm still friends with John. Yeah. He lives. He lives here in Charlotte. Yeah, I see him from time to time. What a small world! I had no yeah, idea. Crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, as a kid, I, I I know his son all the time. You know, for I've known him since I, you know, before I knew you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's really, really, really cool. Yeah. Really is. Wow. And thanks for. For the kind words. And, you know, once I got that match with Bob and Brad, just to kind of button this up a little bit, Bob said, I've never seen you around, you know, what, how long you've been working? I said, well, I've had about <laughs> six workouts and, and this is my second match. He says, are you shit me? He says, well, listen, I'm booking Pensacola. We're just here to get TV exposure. You know, would you like to come down and, and work for us? I said, well, I, I 
are you kidding me? I, 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 my God. And I was kind of speechless. He said, you got a job? At the time, Jerry, I was cutting meat in a grocery store, warehouse groceries. And for Rome, that was a good job. Yeah. You know, paid pretty pretty good. But, you know, he said, well, if you got a job, I can only use you three weeks. And I said, uh, I just quit that job. I don't want to be a meat cutter. I want to be a wrestler. So Bob and them used me for three weeks. And then they sent me to Watts five months there. And then I went to uh, Georgia championship wrestling with Matt Bourne as my partner and Paul Ellering was our manager. And that was really my first break. Wow. Who gave you the name Anderson? How, how did that come about? Believe this or not, we're sitting in, uh, I was Marty Lundy when I wrestled for Bill Watts and, uh, they were getting ready to send Matt Bourne to Atlanta. He was partners with Duggan and DiBiase, the Rat Pack in Louisiana. Yeah. They were the top heels. So they were getting ready to send Bourne to Atlanta. They needed a partner. And just out of nowhere, we're sitting here talking about, they were talking about that. And uh, JYD looked at Bill Watts and he went, hey, Bill, why don't you send Lundy? He looks just like Ole Anderson. Make him an Anderson. And JYD, and I mean, Bill Watts looked at me and he looked at him and he said, that's a great idea. Wow. Lundy? I'm going to call. I'm gonna, you got any problems with, with going to work in Atlanta? That's where I was from. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And a week later, he said, hey, you finish up in two weeks and you start in Atlanta. Oh. JY, JYD got me that break. He yeah. made me and basically made me an Anderson. Yeah. How did Ole accept you when you came in there? I mean, was it you know what's, or- you know what's crazy is – it's when I walked in for our first meeting, he looked back, he looked at, I was waiting on him to cuss me for what I heard. Uh, yeah. He said, well, Jesus Christ, you do look like me. I don't know if he was having a bad day or what, <laughs> <laughs> but he, he missed a good chance to cuss me right off yeah. the get go. Yeah. Cause I was shell shocked when I yeah. walked in there. Yeah. Jerry, uh, what was your relationship like with Ole? I mean, I'm sure you guys worked together a bunch. You know, you know and, 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 and thanks for asking that. I had, I, you know, a, a strange relationship with Ole because I was a business partner with Ole. But, yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I told this story the other day on, on JBL and I's podcast, you know, because we were talking about, you know, Georgia and, of course, Ole and everything. And, of course, you know, when we made our cell to, to, to you know, to, to – to, to be up there <laughs> and you know there's there a big fallout there so you know I'd, I'd gone and when I turned like 75 years old I told John you know I had one of those epiphanies I'm part of the hate in the world I'm part of the negative stuff in the world I'm going to start it for that 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 autograph session that they have up there every, every year the team or the gathering yeah whatever yeah, but- it wasn't a gathering it was a great price deal before that so oh okay so, great so, price so anyway I knew Ole would be there and I, I told my wife before, I said, you know what? I'm going to go up and I'm going to thank Ole. What are you going to thank him for? You hate him. I, well, I, I don't hate anybody now. I'm through, I'm through with all that damn hate stuff. It's too hard to hate. It's too hard to be pissed off at somebody. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up. All right, when, I, when I first started in Charlotte, North Carolina, I was more or less married to Gene and Ole Anderson, me and Sandy Scott, me and Thunderbolt Patterson, and me and my brother, you know. Uh, you you know, aren't how they programmed up there when you when you when you when you got programmed with them for a year year and a half two years so mm-hmm. I mean and I was I was a young young guy just just getting my my feet wet I'd never been on top anywhere except, except I just started in the business basically Gene and Ole took me and uh, they worked my ass off that's one thing I'll always respect about Ole Anderson. When you went in the ring with Ole Anderson, if you wasn't prepared to, to, to go in there and fight back and to give him a contact, he would eat your ass alive and, and not feel bad about it. But if you went in there and you you showed a little smoke, you showed a little fire, and you showed a little resistance, then you're going to have the match of your life and you're going to be better because of it. And that's one thing. Every time I stepped in the ring with Ole Anderson, I stepped in there being ready, mentally prepared, physically prepared and the best of my abilities that I could, because I knew after that match was over with, I have learned something and I've become a better worker. So only sitting there in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, just had the banquet, big crowds around me. 
people see me coming up to them, you know, all there's all that perspective heat there. And they count about, uh oh, what's gonna happen there? I walk up to him, he stick my hand out, and he don't recognize me, you know, because I lost my hair, you know, I went out all that <laughs> uh, and all the hair. And they, and I said, Joe, no, you're not. And, and they go, yes, only that Joe. But well, what the fuck you want? I said, oh, I stuck my hand. I said, I want to shake it. And I told him the same thing. I really appreciate. I enjoyed being in the ring with you. You made me a better worker. You made me a better performer. And you taught me a lot. I want to thank you for that. Thank you. God bless you. Turn around and walked away. And to me, I buried all that heat, you know. I, but I had I had something I could think him about, and I did. I like an Ole Anderson I, as a worker and competitor. I loved him to death. I loved competing with him. But as a business partner, it was two different Oles, and, I, and I'm not ashamed to say that. <laughs> He's not ashamed to say that. But I had one of those love hate relationships. I loved being in the ring with him. Hated being in the boardroom with him. Thank Go God ahead, it's thank God. Well, I just thank God that it, you could separate the two, you know? Yeah. One thing that, that I learned and I really didn't even, well, yeah, I did. I realized I was learning it from the first time we tagged. I realized he made the baby face work for everything they got. You wasn't going to just, you know, nail him and him could take a bump for you. You had to work to get him down, and the longer the match went, and it was in every aspect of of what he did. If you reverse something, he would take it right back away from you and make you earn it again. And it's one of those things that that you, for me, it stayed with me my entire career. Make the baby faces work for it because the fans appreciate you more. They see you're having to fight for everything you get, and it's not just a heel feeding you. And a lot of guys. Just don't get that today, that struggle of back and forth until somebody finally gets control. It's too easy, in my my opinion, these days for somebody just to take over on somebody and start running high spots when you've lost that first three or four minutes of who's going to get control of this match so they can push the issue. And that I learned from Oli right away, right off the get-go. Well, our, 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 and, and you know that's the blessing that we have working in that in those territorial days with guys like that. You know, with the Jeans and the Oldies and and the Hawks and the Hansons and you know some of those old older guys that we're privileged to work with in the business there. And you 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 be, you get a level of, of toughness that comes from that. And speaking of toughness, Arn Arn, I I I've talked to you about something here, and you know I've. I'd, I'd love to have you on my podcast so we could talk oh, uh, 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 Arn Anderson for an hour, hour and a half there. So maybe we can arrange that when I, when I get off of here. But, you know, as you, I don't know if you know, but I've been working with that Dan Gable Museum up in, up in Iowa for, oh, gosh, I guess going on 10, 12 years there. You know, it, it's the, 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 the Hall of Fame that a lot of people really strive to, to, to be in. We, we have an award, you know, and uh, we had last year's uh, award winner uh, was, was uh, Gary Albright, you know, a tough son of a bitch, you know. So. Mm, yes. And so so we, uh, we have an award called the Carl Gotch Award, and it exemplifies guys who, who use the business to 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 share to share their knowledge with and, and to share that mental toughness with and everything. We we've, we've had a list. JBL been a, one of Mark Henry, all guys that are teachers and coaches and stuff like that. And and, and we have we every July the third weekend in July we have it up in Waterloo Island. And and I'd like to throw to a film here if if I can, Paul. I, I know I'm it's on my show, but you and I have been working on this and. I'd like to throw to a film, a, a, a film video. And, uh, yeah. a video, but first of all, I got to ask you a question. The call got to 2024. Names come up. We had all kinds of names come up, but only one stood out. Only one that got all the committee's attention and and got got a near unanimous vote. And that was you, Arn Anderson. You're our Carl oh. got to 2024. And I I, I want to invite you to Waterloo, Iowa. And we, we put together a little tribute here just to, just to show you how much we appreciate it. Roll, roll, roll that if you can. 
Go ahead. Yep, here we go. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame Dan Gable Museum, located in Waterloo, Iowa, for wrestling fans from around the world, a pilgrimage destination, showcasing the history and legacy of the sport, and residing within the George Tragos Luthez Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, honoring wrestlers with a strong amateur background who've made an impact on professional wrestling. The Frank Gotch Award, given to a professional wrestler who brings positive recognition to professional wrestling through work outside the ring. It is named in honor of the legendary Frank Gotch, a humbled Iowa native who became one of the best known athletes in the world during the early 1900s. First awarded in 2000, previous winners of the Frank Gotch Award include the likes of Jesse Ventura, Gene LaBelle, Mick Foley, Beth Copeland, Stan Hansen, and Mark Henry. And this year's recipient, widely respected and regarded as one of the toughest to ever lace up a pair of boots. From Rome, Georgia. No stranger to all you wrestling fans. A legend in this business. The Enforcer. This guy's a stud. Look at the belt. The Enforcer, double A, Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson. Calling out Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson can do whatever he wants. Arn Anderson, a no-frills, no-nonsense, take-charge kind of wrestler who would fire off a blistering promo and then drive his opponents into the mat with his devastating spine buster. Dubbed the Enforcer of the Four Horsemen, one of the most prominent factions in wrestling history that Arn not only helped form, but christened with its iconic name. You're talking about the Four Horsemen. The four people that make things happen. Arn and Cousin Ole would join Tully Blanchard and Ric Flair to run roughshod over Jim Crockett Promotions and the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. A multi-time champion from numerous tag team title runs in his early days with Southeastern Championship Wrestling, then to JCP, WCW, and the WWE. A four-time world television champion and multiple PWI awards won over the course of his 15-year career. And unfortunately, that career would come to an end in 1997 due to extensive neck and upper back injuries. You knew that when that bell rang, you got all I had that night. Whether I won, whether I lost, I gave you everything I had. But with his wealth of knowledge, as a master of ring psychology and a passion for the business, Arn would transition into a backstage role as a producer and agent, helping shape matches and segments in WCW and WWE, becoming an influence in the careers of dozens of current and former stars. Recently finishing up his tenure with All Elite Wrestling, where Arn would work as a coach for several talent, including the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, as well as a Next Generation Anderson, following in his footsteps with his son Brock. And he continues to share his knowledge and that passion for professional wrestling every week on his podcast, Arn. Regarded as one of the greatest pro wrestlers to never have become a world champion, a killer on the stick, and an assassin in the ring, a WWE Hall of Famer with the Four Horsemen, a mentor, a legend, and an icon in the business. We know Arn isn't one to toot his own horn, but toot, toot. Inducted into the George Tragos Luthez Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame as the recipient of the 2024 Frank Gotch Award Arn Anderson. Or do I have a yes? I'm speechless, Gerald. I was oh. not expecting this. Yes, of course. I, mean, I would be. Oh, thank you, my friend. Thank honored you. and thrilled and oh, floored. To be honest with you, I, I got to. I got to tell you up front. I don't. I don't think I'm qualified. To oh, be boy. in with the, that group of guys, unanimous Brother, vote. You're, you're unanimous vote. You're more than qualified. When when your name popped up there as, as a nominee, our people led up. I mean that 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 that's the the, the 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 touch that you have on people that you have so much respect. You don't real realize how much respect you have in the world of professional wrestling. And then go into a hall of fame like that, Dan Gable Hall of Fame, and Coach Gable will be there. And he'll, he'll he's waiting to meet you too. So he oh, voted yeah. for you. So we're we're more than more than honored to have you join us. I appreciate you you having me on here. And, and let me present this award. I said, please, please sign me up. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm flabbergasted. Well, 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 I'll have I'll have some have my people get hold of your people, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Chad, Chad, uh, Chad Olson and, and Troy Peterson up in Waterloo, they're my boots on the ground people. They're the ones that really make a, make that museum roll up there. We were honored last year. We had Conrad Thompson up and, uh, to accept the the the, the uh, 
Gordon Shoulder Award, and you know, and it, was, it was a great honor having him up in all his career. So we look forward to having having the Andersons up, and 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 the next generation of Anderson brothers. Your your son Brock, I hope he's able to attend, and just to, just to meet Coach Gable, it, it's such an honor, and and, and, and I mean, I, it's so funny, our, our you know the. The crossover, our guys respect Gable so much. It's just unbelievable. Oh God! And, and they don't know what to expect from Coach Gable, but Coach Gable, he he's a he's a fan of ours. He's a, he's a fan of the professional wrestling. He gave one of the best speeches, opening speeches last year I've ever heard about how professional wrestling has helped amateur wrestling. See the perspective on how how to promote and how how to entertain their, their fans up there. And he, he said, "We we've helped." Amateur wrestling go, and he's he's honored to have us in in, in his his hall of fame up there. So thank you very much, Art. No, thank you, Gerald. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. So great to have you on the show today, and I couldn't wait to do this with you. And it's just been a pleasure to get to have you on here and and do this for Arn. Thank you very much, and I'm serious. We have we want to have you on Arn soon. We you'll have a good time with Bradshaw up there. Okay, buddy. Thank right. you. Thank you, you very, very much. Thank you, Jerry. You. Have a great happy, happy, happy New Year to both of y'all. I'm about to right. Right. Thank you. Same happy to you, year. sir. All right. See you, Jerry. Much respect, Gerald. Much Thank respect. You. Let's say very Thank you. All right. Arn? Uh, did you do this? <laughs> I didn't do this, but I got a call uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, well, about two weeks ago and said uh, it was from Conrad. And he said, hey, I'm on the board. I want to let you know that Arn's name came up over the summer and it was a unanimous decision. And I said, man, I got cold chills right now while you're telling me this. What, what's the plan? What do we got to do? And he said, I'm thinking we got to get Jerry Briscoe on the show. I said, I'm in, let's do it. And the rest was history. Chris McDonald put that video together for you. He got me. I was in contact with him over the holiday break. And, uh, buddy, I am, who's Chris McDonald. He's, he does a lot of the video stuff for, uh, for Conrad and ad free show and team behind the scenes. So he's on, he's on part of our, yeah, yeah. He does a really great job. And how'd you like that video, man? I got, yeah, I mean, we're going to share it with our audience. All of you, you'll be able to see this. And we thought what better way than to do this than to have Jerry on and just surprise you with it right here on the show. So when I texted you and I said, Hey, we're going to have Jerry on the show. Is that okay? And you didn't ask any questions. I thought, yes. All right. He's not going to, well, you know, yeah. what questions could I possibly have? It's an right. honor. To, it would be an honor to have Gerald on the show. It made my life easy. So we got to hoodwink you a little bit and get, get him on here and have a little fun with you. So you swerved the old timer. We did. We did a little swerve, but so I would say it was worth it. Is Conrad going to be, did I hear he was going to be, gonna be the there? He, he said he's going to, no, he's not going to be on this show, but he's going to be there uh, I mean, in July and for your, for your ceremony. I'm going to be there. I'm going to make a trip to be awesome. out there for it. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure Aaron and Brock will want to go. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's going to be a family affair, man. We all can't wait to see, see this happen for you. Whew, that's great. Well, we'll talk off the air. Yeah, more, more about that. That's, but I'm, um, thank you for that. Thank you're, 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 thank you for your part in it. And, you know, I, I'm not used to being really t- handled and treated with such respect. And I just, uh, to be honest with you, I've just always been glad to be there part of the crew. So, well, well buddy, I know that. And it is time for your time in the sun. Okay. You have been such a sacrificial, you've been a giver all your career. You've always put the spotlight on Arn or, or uh, I'm sorry, on Rick or on your tag team partners and always been, you know, now all of a sudden the John Cena's of the world, the Cody's Brock, it's always about others with you, Arn. And this time it gets to be about you a little bit. Even when you went in the WWE hall of fame, it was with the four horsemen, but this is your time, your moment, and you deserve every bit of this. And I know our listeners feel the exact same way. Well, thank you to everybody that feels that way. I'm more than honored. Did you put Christmas on a credit card? Don't stress out about that extra holiday spending. SaveWithConrad.com can help you consolidate all of your high interest rate credit cards into one much lower monthly payment. SaveWithConrad.com has helped families just like yours 
Save up to $800 a month. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. And did I mention no payments until March? So don't make saving money a resolution next year. Make it happen today at SaveWithConrad.com. Ah, well, can't wait. So excited. I, I could jump out of my skin. I'm so happy for you, buddy. And ah, uh, this is just a really cool moment um, to be a part of it for with you. And uh, so what I thought we do, because we're only 35 minutes into this show, and I knew that wouldn't go super long, and it didn't make sense to jump into March 1994 and, and go over that. So I thought, hey, we still got a lot of fan questions. And since this is a celebration, how does it sound if we just go and ask some more fan questions to round out this episode? That'll make the most people happy. I think we okay, can share, we can share at a happy moment. Yeah. And I got a lot of great feedback, um, from people that say, these are some of my favorite episodes is the ask arms, um, because you get to talk, uh, and share a lot about your thoughts, feelings, old stories. So we're going to do that, uh, for the last 25 minutes here of the show. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, just so happy for you, man. So let's do this. We're going to start, with Charlie McClanahan. And he said, I asked Bruce Pritchard this question recently and got a great story about riding with Vince McMahon in a rainstorm. So I'm going to ask you, what is the most scared you've been traveling between towns? Thank both of you guys for all the great content. Thank you, Charlie. So is there a time or a travel situation where you remember, Hey, I, you were kind of scared out of your wits a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Lee working as an agent producer for WWE. We, Finished a show in uh, Milwaukee, and the next day was Green Bay. And okay. I, and it snowed all day. It was not like this was, you know, uh, some big revelation that we walked out the door and went, hey, there's a foot and a half of snow on the ground. How'd that happen? We watched it all day, watched it all day, but the reality is you had to be, you know, at, at SmackDown the next day. So... What do you do? It's 1130 at night. There's not any traffic on the road except trucks and the very few people that just had to be somewhere. And, uh, man, it was it was a, just a steady, constant snow blowing sideways, snow blowing straight down. And I figured out, I think, I don't, I don't remember exactly, I think it's over 100 miles from between the two. And I'm telling you, I figured out right away, we better get in this. There's one lane. I mean, it's a, it's a highway. There's two lanes, but it's down to one lane with the trucks in single file. They just get in behind them and follow the taillights, but they're doing 30 miles an hour. So what would be a hour and a half trip was over three hours and it was white knuckle driving and find out the next day um, they must have been behind me or I would have seen it. Uh, Natty and TJ had a wreck. <sighs> they went off in the weeds, so they had a major high spot. A couple of people on the crew, I guess just on the way in college, had a wreck. Yeah, right. Drove off the road. <clears throat> and uh, I can't see well anyway. T you're tired already from a from a very stressful day, and now you're white knuckle driving. Every time that truck touched his brakes, you had to you know touch yours, and it just was really, really, really stressful. Somehow I made it, and uh, were you by yourself or did you have a par travel partner? By, by myself. Oh um, God! Wow. <clears throat> yeah, it was. Uh, it was one of those that stood out. So I was, you know, God was watching over me. That's all I can figure. And those trucks pretty much saved anybody that was including each other who was on the road that night. Have you ever been in a bad accident and traveling with wrestling that you can recall? Never have. Wow. Thank God. And all those years on the road, knock, knock on wood, knock on wood, buddy. Mm. God, uh, you know, and, and uh, Hey, driving fast and driving on unfamiliar roads and, going through those Louisiana roads that were not marked or not lined, you know, and no lights. I mean, I've been through some pretty treacherous driving trips and just sure. once again, you know, God was looking after me and he, right. and he got me through those trips. Mm. 
Uh, we have another uh, question here from Dal, and he has an awesome question. D A L, I think Dale, maybe his name got cut off, uh, but he has one that I don't think you've answered before, Arn. He said Eric Bischoff has talked before about how quiet he kept Hogan's pending heel turn. Going into Bash at the Beach, he wants to know Bash at the Beach '96. Did you have any suspicions of who the Outsiders' third man would be? And what was your response when you saw Hulk Hogan turn heel? So did you have any idea going into no, that show? No, none. They, they, they sat on it. Nobody knew that that inner circle of probably three people, probably Eric Hogan and maybe one more person. I don't know. Sullivan knew. Kevin, yeah. Must have been Kevin, yeah. Yeah. Been crazy to not have Kevin. And uh, yep. uh, like everybody else, shock. Yeah, I, I, and that's that's I think it's fun to hear the boys say when they're surprised or shocked. That's when you know it, it's it's a happening. Well, and immediately when you're in my position, you know, when you're doing the agent and producer, and you're still wrestling, and you look at it from so many different angles. I looked at it as a wrestler. Hmm, how, how's that going to be? Is that going to fly? Can he? Are they going to accept Hogan as a heel? And can he work heel? And then you start looking at it from a business standpoint. I mean, is this is in this business, there's very few chances to have a first, you know, because every everything's been done. What right. has it what hasn't been done? Yeah. So so God, hey, this is a first, which is huge for our business. So it, it certainly got the cogs turning. As a guy that helped out a lot with John Cena, do you think he should have turned heel at some point? Okay. When you have the trust of children and that was his audience, you know, John, like the grown males were jealous of him to, you know, a little bit to a degree. And, uh, but he had those kids and when you have their trust and you betray the betray their trust, I think what you would have gotten would have been a disappointed group at John, but it wouldn't have transferred into heat seeking money drawing heat just because, you know, it's kids are his audience. Well, that and what he did for make a wish. And, uh, not only that, he, everything he about him was branded towards merch for kids, the towels, the t-shirts, everything was driven that to that audience. Fellow. Yeah. And you can't act like that that didn't happen or you had underlying reasons for doing that. I mean, it's, it just was not a good move. It yeah. would not would not have been a book. And good they never move. did it. They never did it. He was baby one of the guys baby faces the entire time to this day. Same thing would apply to Steamboat. Yeah, Rick, there you Rick, go. Ricky used to bug me all the time. All right, I want to be a I want to work heel. I have so much fun. I want to be a heel. I said, Ricky, told him the same thing. All you would do is upset a bunch of grandmothers and grandfathers. A lot of people that believe in you, buddy, you were just disappoint them and that's not what you want to be as a heel you want to be a rat bastard that everybody in the building wants dead is the best case scenario to be a heel and and as fans you can almost especially if it's not in their nature it's it's just the farthest thing away from ricky steamboat it would seem so unnatural Yeah. yeah yeah i'm with you and once you get there if you figure out that it's just not clicking it's hard for him to be automatic on doing some stuff that he's not used to doing and it's not happening, then it's too late. You can't fix it. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on. Terrell Lewis is up next. He says, Arn, you've talked many times about how brutal the WWE schedule was as a performer and as a producer. Now that Brock's AEW contract <laughs> is up, would you be open to him working with WWE or would you steer him away from, from that? Um, he's going to have to make his own decisions on, on the options that he has. I think he needs more seasoning. He needs, you know, with the pressures not on him that it's off. He needs, you know, to learn, you know, some more of the, of the mechanics, but basically that's not the issue. He can basically, basically do anything mechanically and he's got a good head for the business. He's just got to get in there and pull some time. That's all that's missing. And it's the same thing that was missing with everybody that's ever put on a pair of boots. You have to have time in to get better. And it's, I would, I would 
think for 2024, that's really his goal. Get in there and work as many, what, independent shows as he yes. possibly can, fill up his calendar and get those reps in. Well, and not to say if somebody offered him something he couldn't refuse, that's going to be his call at the time. But uh, yes, you know, he, he needs to get as many reps as he can with as many different opponents as he can. Yeah. Terry Weaver's up next. He says, Arn, you were remembered for many things in your career. If you could only be remembered for one thing, what would it be? Hmm. Every, every time I went to the ring, I had the right goal in mind, which was to get the match over number one, to get my opponent over, number two, send my opponent back through the curtain the way I found him in one piece, and somewhere in all that hodgepodge of for everyone else, take enough of a match that people got to see that I was different. I think too, what we got to see in that video that Chris McDonald did, the consummate professional, you do, you just carried yourself. Uh, like if someone wanted to look to see how should a wrestler carry themselves, cut promos, work great right in the ring, uh, be a part of a, a squad in that role, whether it's the horseman, whether it's a tag team, just the consummate professional arm. Uh, it's, it's who you are, man. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. I tried to be, and that was a goal that you can achieve is be a pro man, yeah. be a pro, uh, you know, and that, and you got to know what being a pro encompasses. You walk but, the walk. Yeah. I mean, it's like you have a job and it has a lot of different facets and it. The beauty of our business is it changes from day to day. The guy that, that I wrestled yesterday may have gotten 50% of the match. The guy I wrestled today may get 90% of the match. The guy the third day may get 10% of the match. It's just being able to be a pro and know what is needed, know what how your opponent has been used in the past and how you should compete with him. If you're going to lay the idea down that today, today – Tough, buddy. You're just overmatched. Yeah. And that's the story of the match. Adam Krasnoff is up next, and he has three questions. In May of 2002, the WWF changed its name to WWE after the company lost a lawsuit initiated by the World Wildlife Fund. At that time, you were there working as a road agent. What do you remember about getting the news of the name change? Man, this is a big deal at the time. Did Vince McMahon call a meeting before television informing everyone of the change? And do you remember what the reaction was like among the talent and when they were informed to no longer refer to the product as the WWF? I think the the guys that were seasoned and thought they were smart thought, well, they'll never win this. Yeah, It's two different things. We're WWF. F is okay. If you're talking about animals, we all love animals. We're all dog people or most of us are. Mm -hmm. We know the difference between that and world wrestling federation. It was for me, it was so distinctly different. Two different brands. You could have more than one. As long as you made it clear, you were, you know, talking about whichever one you were talking about. And boy, did I get fooled. Yeah. Right. They won. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, in 2002 was around the period arm where I was, <laughs> I'd taken a little bit of break from wrestling. It was right at my, I, I got married in 01 and I wasn't watching too much in 02, but I just, everybody heard about it. WWF changing their name to the WWE. And it was like, wow, this is like the NFL changing their name or something, right? Like a staple brand. And it kind of just kind of, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> and and depending on the topic and that you're covering, you know, I'm covering with people on shows. It's like the WWE or F at that. It's like always a thing because, and there for a long time on videos, they had to blur out the logo until they finally got that rectified. Uh, I don't know if you remember those days where they couldn't even show the logo. Yeah, absolutely. Unreal. 
unreal all that was caused um adam's next question he said arn we know that you and this is fun after what you and briscoe were talking about we know that you became an anderson because of your physical resemblance to Oli. we just got to hear that story but can you explain how you chose the first name arn i'm guessing it was a tribute to someone in your family named arnold <laughs> Oli Oli came up with arn okay he, i think it was something like he said you know I'll be damned. You do look like me. That was the first line he said. And then he said something else and something else. He says, okay, so we'll call you Arn. Just random. Out great, of the blue. Great. Call me anything you want. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> as long as they got the tack on Anderson at the end. Arne yeah, Anderson. yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe it. There's Ole Anderson sitting there, a guy that I'd grown up, you know, watching. You know, I'm sitting in a – it would be if you're like you're, if you're an actor and you're trying to break in that business and, you know, you haven't done hardly anything. You walk in a room and you sit down at a table and there's Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and Clint Eastwood and – Jack Nicholson, the whole gang. Yeah. Yes. I mean, Gene Hackman, the right. whole crew, are, they're all sitting at a table. And you you come in, and they're just getting up and going, making a plate. And they're acting like life is just normal. This is just normal stuff. And you're sitting there with your jaw on the ground. That was me. I was starstruck. Make no mistake. Uh, it It's just – I look – I we're, what's the proper word? I revered everyone that was in the business. I hope that's the right term. I was just, you know, I looked at them. No yeah, you had a reverence, a reverence for it. Yeah. It's a great. Yeah. One. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's unbelievable, you know, and once, once I actually got to having matches, you know, for, I guess it would be, you would have to say it started with Bob and Brad that match and then I went down to Pensacola and now I go out and there's a house show and I'm standing in the middle of the ring and I'm, I made it. I'm here. I wanted to ask this while Jerry was, was still with us, but then he started to transition into the, into the hall of fame, but, uh, your time with Ole, since we're talking about Ole, did he ever bring up the Briscoes and kind of what went down with the Georgia sellout or he didn't, he never was the kind of really have deep conversations. I'm sure. He wanted to know what the few times that we were traveling together, he wanted to know where we're eating. <laughs> that was how deep it got. <laughs> you know, normally like with Matt and all the, all every other partner that, that I had, and it was normal in those days, you would go get in the car and go wherever you're going. If it's going to the restaurant or going to the hotel or going on a trip to the next town, it would always be, well, what'd you think? And you compare notes, and that's how you learned. You critiqued each other. Oli was sit down. All right, where are we eating? That was it. That's it. Um, and you were picking, and as long as you, and I guess he liked your food choices? I, would, I said, whatever you would like. And he went, <laughs> he went, you're buying, right? And I went, of course. Of course. Of course. I'm, I have a reverence for you. I'm buying whatever you want. Of course. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here with my jaw on the ground. You're Ole Anderson. You're sitting <laughs> right there. Oh, it's so whatever good. you want, I'll buy. Right. And we're getting two of each. It's That sounds like me traveling with my dad. As soon as we get in the car, where are we eating? <laughs> Well, we, dad, we just had lunch. I know, but what's for dinner? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And you snap to attention and do the right thing. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, so fun. Uh, Adam's last question. He wants to know if you remember how you came up with the throat slash taunt that you did during your entrance. I don't, but uh, wherever I saw it, it was not in the business. It was, it was something one of your horror flicks? Yeah, it was it was a something on TV or in a movie or something. And, and I don't know that it was to that degree. It probably was just one of those, and I kind of made it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it was for those watching on YouTube. Love it. Feel a little nastier. Yeah. Feel a little gorier. A little slow pace and in the intensity. I'm slowly cutting your head off here. Uh, I, that's the idea. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't remember where I saw it. I stole it from something somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure I just didn't come up with that out of nowhere. Back to the Arn name, by the way. I, I mean, it, you couldn't be anything else at this point, right? It's like when you name your kid and you just get used to it after all those years. They couldn't be anybody else. Same thing with Arn. You, I mean, come on, double A. Well, three, three letters. Oli yeah. was three letters. Oh, there you go. It was uh, meant to be uh, like uh, Norwegian heritage. Okay. So it, it fit. It wasn't really out of the blue. It, you know, it was. There was some reason. There was some thought behind it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Matt S with a great what if. He said, if Arn was still an in ring performer when WWF bought WCW, does Arn think he would have gotten picked up by WWF as one of the initial talents that was brought in? So, what do you think? God, I, ho I would hope so. Yeah, really. His pocketbook hopes so too. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it would, uh, I would like to think I would have been good enough to fit in with the crew. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when that happened, when the, when it got bought out, because kind of fill in the blanks for me, what did that time period look like for you? Because you were still you were a producer for WCW, right? I had six months left on my contract. Okay. And we got calls from the office that, uh, and it was actually the WCW office and people that were representing them. They, you know, they said we've been bought. WWF bought us. Uh, you have six months on your contract. We were we are going to honor that. So they were going to go ahead and pay me for six more months, my full contract, which is what they did with everybody. And the first thing I thought, you know what I thought? Okay, I've never had a time off like this. I'm going to Aruba, baby, brother. <laughs> that all you beaches. <laughs> I'm not saying bitches. I'm saying beaches better get ready because I'm thinking to get go old up and get a cooler go. and get in my chair with some cold beverages. I love it. And uh, so I, you know, for six, you know, and I, I tried to be pretty frugal, live beneath my means and all that. And we were starting to get straightened out a little bit financially to where, right. you know, after that six months, I was going to be okay for a while. And Good. about about three months into that, I think, is when they started picking up talent, WWF, you know. Uh, it was, I'm going to say, I started with them, God, first part of the summer, maybe. And you started right as a producer? Yes, sir. Wow. So yeah. you were barely off for three months and they had you coming in. Well, yeah, I went down to Atlanta. They wanted me to come down for an interview and I went down, met with JR. JR is the one that hired me. So was it, a, and so JR, you were already on the radar at that point. It wasn't a conversation with, you know, Hey, Hey, you got to talk to Arn Anderson. It was, we know about Arn Anderson. JR is going to, is going to call him. And yeah. you know, they, they were smart enough to know that I had a good reputation and always have with the, with the talent. So I've always been straight with everybody. I tell them sure. the truth, you know? Uh, so I had a good re re working relationship. And for that transition, that was might have been a, a bumpy road, you know, depending on how you're going to be treated or you're gonna, we're going to all be brought in just to bring out on TV and crucify to show that WWF was superior to WCW. And just, you know, there was a lot of what if, what ifs, yeah, you know, I you know you. how I am about what ifs. I know how you are. Yeah, They are important. Yep. Real quick, while we're talking about you couldn't wait to tour all the beaches up and down the, the, the East Coast or Aruba, someone asked from one of our last uh, shows, and I did want to ask you this. You normally have been to Aruba, but we were talking about, I guess, a few weeks ago, your recent vacation, and it was it was an island near Aruba? or they Cura were Curacao. Curacao Island. Okay. And I think it's, it's more as close as it is to, from this is the information I got, after we got down there, um, even though it's really, really close to Aruba, it's more of a European. The Europeans know more about Curacao. It is much, much cheaper than Aruba. Okay. And that's once I got down there and I, I started looking at meal prices and things of that nature and how many points it took, you know, because, you know, I'm a huge Marriott guy. Yeah. So I use Marriott points. 
uh, used American miles to fly the family down. So it was a very inexpensive, if you want to have an inexpensive trip, I would suggest Curacao. And you could get more to eat for your dollars, you're saying? Yes, the meals were cheaper. Now the portions were smaller, so it's how do you balance that? You know, you use can, more points. <laughs> well, you had then you had to have two meals and all that. No, we didn't. We didn't get two meals. But uh, I'm just a huge, huge Aruba fan because if you stay at that Marriott, you know, let me just say, if you want to research in advance, look at all the amenities that they have. Biggest casino on the island, yeah, right there in the hotel. Ruth Chris. Ruth yeah. Chris. Yeah. They got like Italian restaurant. They've got homemade ice cream. They got a home big bakery. There's about five restaurants. You can go play chess with those giant chess, oh, pieces. Giant chess pieces. Okay. Bingo out by the pool. All the water sports are right down from the you go to the pool when you come out of the hotel. Then you go to the beach. It's probably 30 yards. Uh Anything you want to do, water sports, snorkeling, uh, you know, windsurfing, uh, any of that stuff that you want to do, it's all right there. And if you choose to go downtown and eat, it's about a twelve dollar cab ride each way. Are you a uh, are you a spa guy, Arn? When you go to these resorts, do you get like a massage or anything? Hell kidding. yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm a fan too. So I had the Paul Bromwell question. And the lady that, that gave me the massage was really had strong hands. And I Perfect. You know, said, dig on in there. And That's right. Cause you had that back issue going on. So I bet that was good. It helped. Uh, and it also helped that they had the stretching balls down. One other thing I have to tell the truth about the gym there at the, we stayed at the Marriott. The gym is not, was not adequate no pressing machines. They had a bunch of dumbbells and stuff like that, two sets of cables, but they did not have any shoulder press. They didn't have a uh, chest press or any of those things that once you're all beat up like I am, you have to have because this hand is stronger than this hand, so you can't do dumbbells because it's off, you know. Yeah. So the Marriott gym is five times better than the one that we had, but we were there and we we're stuck with it. So we made it work. There you go. All right. Last question. And we'll wrap this episode up. Matt Richards wants to know if you've any good memories of working in Pittsburgh and have you ever had a Permani brothers, Permani brothers sandwich? Who brothers? Permani brothers. That's the one where they have like the coleslaw and the French fries and the meat on the Italian bread. Have you ever had a Permani brothers? French fries on, on a sandwich. Yeah, well. it was, it was, it started back, I think in the fifties and it was for truck drivers that were on the road <clears and> they <throat> to have everything in a sandwich between two slices of bread. So this concept was created. Well, we're all oh, we'll through the French fries, the coleslaw and the meat and cheese all between two slices of thick cut Italian bread. And now it's a chain and they're starting to be throughout the country a little bit. And uh, it's, but it's known from, it started in Pittsburgh. May to be honest with you. Yeah. If I was a truck driver, we might be having a different conversation, but I think that feels a little bit clouded. <laughs> well, I've but had their sandwiches. Now, I ate coleslaw on a barbecue sandwich for me. You see? All you day. Run. Yeah, but, there you go. But but I don't put the fries and cheese on it. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're out even at the cheese. So, yeah. Well, and the fries, I mean, am I eating a sandwich or am I eating, what am I eating here? The fries? What am I eating here? <laughs> I like to distinguish when I have this palate. I got gotcha. you. Get greased with something. I'm I want to be you. able to understand what it is I'm eating. I understand. All right. Well, that was a fun question. I had fun with it. I've had a few of their sandwiches, a few too many, Matt, and I am a fan, but, you know. I, no I disrespect. Have- I don't have high standards as when it comes to food. I'm, I'm ready to slop with the hogs, but Hey, this has been a lot of fun. Arn, I want to talk about the first half of this episode, by the way, great question and answer time, but having Jerry on Gerald Briscoe and listen to you and him reminisce and talk about the old times, but then the big announcement, you're a, another hall of fame accolade to add to your resume, the Dan Gable hall of fame, 
coming this year in the summertime, buddy. Congratulations. Once again, I'm so happy for you, man. Well, thank you. And I have to be right up front. You know, it's like, uh, it's like uh, earlier when I was still working for WWE, uh, I was honored in Vegas at the Cauliflower Alley Club with the with the uh, Shooter Award. Now I looked at Michael Hayes and went, "Who? How could I possibly?" We're both standing up there, and I went, "How could I possibly? I can amateur wrestle and beat anybody. How could I have gotten that award?" And then Michael got an award. Same thing. It was like a ass kicker award. I'm like, <laughs> how do we fit into this scenario? Uh, so, but when Michael got his, then you felt like you were validated because if that if guy you can get it, it, I can get one too. <laughs> I don't see Michael Hayes doing a Grand B roll, but maybe <laughs> I'm mistaken. He was an entertainer. He, he, he's PS man. He's from Bad Street. So. Great entertainer, but yeah, shooter. Robert. I don't know. That's right. That's right. Oh, so good. Hey, so, I'm, I'm, like, uh, so I'm honored. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a little shocked. I really am. And I'm honored. And, uh, thank you. I was getting a little clumped, a little, a little teared up during that video. I got to admit, man, so happy for you. And, uh, can't wait to celebrate. And I can't wait for all of our listeners to hear and see that and celebrate with you as well this year. And we'll keep you posted with more information as we get closer to the event. We'd love for many of you to share in and come out and, and support Arn. Uh, when, when the celebration takes place at the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, but I did want to mention, Arn, before we get out of here, your book, Arn Anderson, My Life is Wrestling's Enforcer, is set to be shipped. Dirk Manning sent another email. He let everyone know that it's to be shipped after the new year, so after this holiday, which just happened. He actually sent some pictures out. It's being tweeted out on your social media account. There's actually pictures in hand of the graphic novel. And as you're listening to this, you may have already gotten your copy in your hand. So this is so exciting, man. It's finally happened. For the ones that have gotten them, please share it. Yes. Because uh, there's been a long wait, and I apologize for that. And it was out of our control. But uh, please, for everybody that's waiting for one, everybody that got involved on the Kickstarter, please, if you like it, if you enjoy it, please put the word out there. And so it'll make that wait maybe a, a little easier. Maybe it'll, it'll make it harder. But make, please share what you yeah. feel. And it's available now pre-order. You can go to Amazon and, uh, and Barnes and Noble. It's a, it's available to pre-order. So go ahead, check it out. You can find the links again. Um, it's on our social media, but we're ecstatic that the day has finally arrived. A uh, quick reminder too, as we wrap up the episode, if your business targets that 25 to 54 year old demographic, there's no better place than to advertise right here with us on the Arn Show. Uh, you can do that by going to advertisewitharn.com and it'll walk you through the steps that you can uh, go ahead and fill out the information and we will advertise your business, your service right here on the Arn Show. We'd be thrilled to do it and we would appreciate your support so much. And uh, it works. We have a targeted audience and Arn and I uh, have really been able to connect with some of our advertisers as well. So check it out, advertisewitharn.com. Uh, Guys, listen, next week, we continue the walk. We're finally back to our normal scheduled episodic uh, view of Arn's career. We're finally getting to March 1994. I'll do a recap at the beginning just to remind Arn what we were even talking about all those weeks ago. But uh, WCW heads back to Europe for a 10-day tour. Cactus Jack, he's going to lose part of his ear. Arn, you're teaming with Ricky Steamboat on the house show loop, and the rumors have started to make their uh, to make the circle that Hulk Hogan is going to be joining WCW. And then we're also going to look at the build to the new pay-per-view, Spring Stampede. Uh, Arn, I'm looking forward to the episode with you, my man. Yeah, it's going to be hard readjusting, getting everything back in order, right? We skip around so much. <laughs> we have. We've done all these Ask Arns and celebrations and fun stuff, though. Well, my hat's off to you, buddy, for keeping us in order. You know, you're a great detail guy, and I appreciate you. Man, I couldn't do it without the team that we have around us. I'm talking Andrew Hermes. I'm talking Marcus D'Angelo, Dom. The guys, they do such a great job behind the scenes on the show, and it's a thankless roles 
And we, I, I would be very, very limited without their help and support. So I want to give them a shout out as well. Arn, you make this whole thing happen. This is really all about you and your stories. And we appreciate you so much. Once again, congratulations on the big news on behalf of Arn Anderson, the enforcer, the soon to be Dan Gable museum, national wrestling hall of famer, Arn Anderson. This is Paul Bromwell. And we'll see you right back here next week on another episode of Arn. I think I should shoot a double leg on Dan Gable. I would love if you did, buddy. I would love if you did. Talking about dead man walking. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll hold that one off. I think so, too.